Hey guys, so today we're going to show you how to set up Cura for the Funmat HT from Intamsis and their entire line of printers, really. Um, if you're using Cura, it works a little bit differently from Simplify 3D, so you'll need to do a bit more legwork to get it set up on the Funmat. So we're just going to start by opening up Cura. Okay, so now that we're, we've opened up Cura, you're going to want to come up to the top here and select Add Printer. Now, it's not gonna find the printer or any of that. You're gonna just have to go straight to non-networked custom FFF printer. You can call it the FunMat HT video for this one and click add. Now, this will pop up the, the screen that has machine settings and this is where you're gonna wanna do all the setup. So hit 260 millimeters on the X, 260 on the Y, 260 on the Z, makes it easy, it's a rectangular build volume, it has a heated bed, it actually has a heated build volume, and this is a new feature, just came out a couple months ago, so we'll just, you know, give it that one, and then you can set it to Ultimaker 2 G-Code. You can also use Marlin, uh, that will work, uh, I believe RepRap works as well, but the machine's set up uh, based on an Ultimaker 2. So we can leave these scripts as is, and one extruder, good to go. Now, go over to the extruder tab and make sure that you set the filament diameter to 1.75. If you have a different size nozzle, change that, but it'll be automatically a 0.4, and then we're good to go, hit next. So, now that we have our custom machine set up, you're gonna wanna go to visionminer.com slash software, and here we are at the top. And we've got a download right here for baseline Cura profiles. Go ahead and hit download. <clears throat> now this will give you a zip file. Just minimize this stuff here. I'm gonna drag this to the desktop. I'm gonna extract it right here. I might put a bunch of profiles all over my desktop. Yes, it did. So, uh, we're just gonna go with PSU, polysulfone. Really, really cool, high temperature filament. And we'll just start with that one. I'm gonna open Cura back up, and in materials, I'm gonna click the down here, and then hit go down to manage materials. You can also get to this menu through, uh, what is it? Settings, configure setting visibility. Nope, that's a different one. Any, any of the preferences pane, you can get back to materials. Now, under here, we're gonna go import up here at the top. Click import. That's gonna give me a explorer window. And it looks like we've already loaded these on the computer, but I'm gonna go just to my desktop where the new ones are. I'll select PSU and hit open. Now it says successfully imported material. Awesome, hit okay. And now we've got Vision Miner PSU loaded up. Well, that one's a favorite, so I'm actually gonna scroll down. Let me close the favorites, close generic. There's a bunch of stuff in here. And there'll be a, um, there'll be a drop down called Vision Miner. And you just go right in here. It looks like we've got them both logged in. So I'm gonna select PSU, good to go. Now make sure, again, that in your machine profile, you set it up as 1.75 millimeter filament. Otherwise, none of these options will show up. If it's automatically 2.85, which is what it's normally set up to, uh, you won't even see any of these profiles, so make sure the machine is set up properly, and then in here in the material, you'll be able to set this one up. I'm gonna select it, hit activate, and close. Now what this will do is, if you come into Cura, and this is your first time, uh, if you click custom over here, it'll show you more settings. Now there's another button right here where you can go basic, advanced, or expert settings, we're gonna go expert, and then if you're really feeling frisky, you can do show all settings, and that'll open up even more settings. But as you can see, the baselines will be set up in here. We've got it set to a 0.1 or 100 micron layer height uh, automatically. The shells are gonna be set up. Uh, but the biggest things you need to worry about are the speed. As you can see here, 60 millimeters a second. We're gonna probably wanna go down to 35 for that. Uh, actually, it's PSU, so I forgot. You can actually print that a lot faster. Um, material, 
This is where you've got your flows, everything else, uh, but the speed and where's my temperatures? You've got build plate adhesion. Usually we like to do a skirt um, offset from the part because using our nanopolymer adhesive, it's, it's a glue designed for these high temp filaments and you actually don't really need to use a brim or a raft or anything like that. You can just print straight and have a perfect corner when it's done. <clears throat> uh, check that out on our site, uh, visionminer.com slash adhesive. Stuff works like magic, seriously. Uh, and then we'll go into here. And for some reason, it's not showing temperatures. So it shows me in here that I have temperatures selected, um, but it's not showing up out here. I don't know exactly why. I'm gonna go back to show all settings. So this is weird. Sometimes this happens. Um, default printing temperature. If, if this is happening, now, you'll see this little eye next to the setting. This, this setting has been hidden by the active machine and will not be visible. So I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna go back up to my Fundamat HD video, manage printers, and I'm gonna go to machine settings. Now, I think this is because we're set up on Ultimaker 2. If you go back and set it to Marlin, and then hit close and close. Then it shows you your printing temperatures, your build plate temperature, everything else. So always, if you're not seeing the settings you should be seeing, go ahead and click that little box and then just look at the, the info circle next to that setting as to, and that'll tell you why it's not showing up. Uh, Cura is extremely customizable. It's very, 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 uh, very capable. It's, cons I mean, it's a, it's the only other mainstream contender against Simplify 3D that is for open systems and really works. And they're always putting new experimental stuff into there, so it's very cool to check out. Even if you're a Simplify 3D veteran, it's worth checking out. They have some really, really cool stuff in there. Everything from gyroid infills to the ironing, um, the, you know, the experimental features that you don't get anywhere else. Now, always keep in mind with these basic starting profiles, that's all they are, is their starting points. They're basic temperatures and speeds and settings for printing small parts. The more complex you get and the larger you get with these high temperature filaments, the more you'll need to modify the profiles for your particular geometry and the size of your part. Different parts are gonna print differently at the same speeds and temperatures. Uh, so you'll need to go in there and change thin wall behavior, support settings, everything else. Just always start small and work your way up to more complex parts. Furthermore, always, always, always examine your slice in the preview, uh, your toolpath, your G-code, all of that. You can look at it before you print and if you notice something strange happening, like it's extruding seven times in this little corner before it moves around, um, you'll be able to find that in the G-code and you'll be able to save yourself a lot of time by getting rid of those errors before you actually hit print. So take a good five minutes, go up and down through the model and just look for anything that might cause it to fail or cause blobbing, other things like that. Most of the issues we see are issues from the actual slice. So I'm just gonna go in here and grab a random file. I don't even know what this looks like, but I'll just <laughs> drop it in. Okay, we got a part at a weird orientation, but that's okay. I'm just gonna hit slice and this, this could actually print like this. Um, if you have good adhesion on the bed, you use a nanopolymer adhesive, of course, it'll stay, it'll print up at that angle, but uh, most of the time you probably wanna lay this down flat or something. I'm gonna, uh, now I'm gonna go to preview up here at the top, and that's gonna actually show me the layer lines. If you hold shift and right click, you can pan, or just right click and rotate. Um, and then the scroll wheel zooms in and out. Now, there's this bar over here. Let me get rid of this menu. There's this bar right here, which lets you pan through all of your layers. And then you can actually pan through the actual 
layer itself uh, with this thing here. So I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and uh, let me just check it out, see if anything weird's going on. Looks pretty normal. Obviously this will give you a good view of your infill so you can tell should I use a different infill pattern, maybe hexagons or triangles or something depending on your part. Maybe you wanna go solid, whatever the case may be, this will help you find stuff. Now, we already found something, right? This, this little area over here might cause issues. We're getting a lot of little small extrusions in here. It's doubling up on stuff. Uh, and that, I mean, for this small of a feature on this geometry, it'll probably be fine, but that's the kind of stuff you wanna watch out for. Uh, it's gonna do, you know, five, six, seven, little extrusions inside this big extrusion and that might be something you want to change if it causes issue in the final part. Always, always, always check it out. Um, if you're getting weird errors, there's a 99% chance you'll be able to spot it in your slice. I guarantee you'll be able to see something in the code there which can be modified with one of the thousand advanced settings in Cura uh, that'll be able to fix that in the software itself. Uh, again, if the materials if the presets aren't showing up, double check your machine is set to 1.75 millimeter filament. If it's anything else, the profiles simply won't be there. And of course, remember, they are starting points. Double check your temperatures, double check your speeds. Uh, you're indefinitely gonna need to change things from layer height and temperature to everything. Um, so familiarize yourself with the advanced settings and the, you know, examining your G-code before printing, uh, changing one thing at a time and seeing how that changes the G-code. You will definitely see some stuff and you'll be a better printer because of it. Another quick tip is that if you're having trouble figuring out what features do or um, you're having issues come up in the slicer and you can't do stuff, Google is your friend. There's so much you can learn just from Googling that particular setting. You'll find forum posts, you'll find entire guides online, uh, but there's a lot of resources out there, both for Simplify 3D and Cura, that will help you get the results that you want. Um, and of course, never, never hurts to ask questions in the forums or on our website. Uh, if you give us a call, sometimes we'll be able to help you, but the fastest way is generally gonna be Googling it. Literally thousands of forum posts and articles and blog posts all over the internet going way more in depth into both of these programs that'll help you a lot when you're mastering all the slicing settings. Now we'll be going more into Cura in the future, uh, but for now, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. We're based here in Southern California and you can email us at contactdivisionminer.com or give us a call at 833-774-6863. Uh, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.